Today I want to talk about x-rays in medical physics and A-level physics. Um, we're going to talk about x-ray production in this video and for further things like x-ray attenuation, I advise you to check out the next videos that I will post. So let's talk about x-rays first of all before we talk about x-ray production. I think that's pretty appropriate. So x-rays, as you may very well know, they're a form of electromagnetic radiation, so they're photons. and they basically have a wavelength of 10 to the power of negative 8 to 10 to the power of negative 13 meters. So if you look at this here, um, they have a higher frequency and a higher energy than our visible light, but they have slightly less than the gamma rays. Um, one thing about x-rays and gamma rays is that the high frequency x-rays will overlap with low frequency gamma rays so there will be x-rays and gamma rays that have exactly the same wavelength which means we need to define x-rays and gamma rays in order to be able to differentiate them from each other because we can't do that solely depending on their wavelengths so the definition of an x-ray is a form of electromagnetic radiation that is produced when fast moving electrons are rapidly decelerated. So when electrons are extremely quickly moving and something will make them stop or make them change course, they go through very rapid deceleration and that basically creates an x-ray. The electrons are moving in the form of a wave instead of like a straight line. So as they kind of decelerate, the shift in their electric field will create a shift in their magnetic field and it would then create another shift in the electric field and, and then so and so on, so on and so forth until there is an actual photon that is produced. So that is how x-rays are produced and on the contrary, gamma rays are produced through nuclear decay or radioactive decay, which you may already know if you've studied any form of nuclear physics. There are three main types of radiation for nuclear physics. There is um, alpha radiation and there's beta radiation and there's also gamma radiation. Alpha radiation and beta radiation are matter. They're matter and they basically get released to stabilize a nucleus um, and during these radiations um, there could be an excited state for the nucleus where it is unstable and so they let out a bit of energy in the form of a gamma ray which is not matter it's an electromagnetic wave um, in order to further stabilize itself so that is the, def the difference between an x-ray and a gamma ray is just you have to define it in terms of the method of their production so what we're really trying to do with x-ray production is x-rays are used to scan our bodies in medical physics and they can allow us to see right through them and see our bones and our innards and everything. Um, in order for us to use these things, we need to find a way to produce these x-rays on demand just by flipping on a switch. So for that, we have an x-ray tube. So this x-ray tube will allow us to produce the x-rays. Um, just from the definition of the x-rays, you already know how x-rays are made. You know that you need fast-moving electrons and they have to be rapidly decelerated. So ultimately with this device, we're trying to do three things. First of all, we're trying to make the electrons that are very fast-moving. Second of all, we're trying to decelerate decelerate these electrons very quickly, very rapidly, and third of all, we want to collect the x-rays that are produced. So we have to fulfill these three things using our device, and this device is called an x-ray tube, which we're going to talk about right now. So this is what an x-ray tube looks like, and just on the get-go, I'm going to point out some parts of the x-ray tube. So this right here is the cathode. And over here you have like a filament and it's a negative terminal over here. So you would have, you know, you have a positive sign over here and you would have a negative sign over here. So this is a cathode, it's negative charge, and there's a positive anode over here. What that creates is it creates, because there's positive charge here and negative charge here, that creates an electric field throughout this chamber. So if there was an electron, it would move in this direction due to the electric field. So as the electrons are released, they are actually accelerated towards the positive side because there is a force on the electron due to the electric field, and we know that F equals MA. So this will basically create an acceleration, which is A. So they will be made to move very quickly. So we've already fulfilled one of our three requirements with just to have fast moving electrons. Now let's talk about the deceleration. When the fast moving electrons hit 
this certain target and this target is in the anode it's a tungsten target it's a type of metal and when they hit it they're going to be made to stop obviously and the motion of stopping imagine if you kind of like zoom in through time and and you look at the electron in extremely slow motion they are basically decelerating at a very quick rate and so as they hit this they decelerate rapidly so we know that happens so we can take that off and finally we are going to have x-rays that are spread um, through this deceleration in all directions and we need to collect the array and so there's a tiny window over here in the um, chamber and this is where the x-ray will come out and it's a useful x-ray beam um, so what we actually do is we have a we have the walls over here and the walls kind of look like this um, and the x-rays are going to basically hit and only those that go through this wall is going to come out. So eventually you have a parallel x-ray. This parallel ray is very important because we want something that is even. So when we put it through skin, it's going to give us like an even um, concentration or intensity of x-ray on the other side of this. If we had like a um, rays going to one side, it would not give us a fair image of, of what's actually inside of the skin. So we need parallel rays. We can't have rays that are going in all sorts of directions. So this parallel ray is what is called a collimated, a collimated beam. And the process of making it parallel is collimation, the process of collimation. So that's essentially what happens. You have the acceleration, you have the deceleration, and then you have the collection of a useful x-ray beam. Now let's go into a little bit more detail about the various parts of, of this x-ray tube. So this chamber is actually in a vacuum. As you can see, it's a vacuum inside here. And the reason why we need to have a vacuum inside of this chamber is because if it was paired, it was filled with air molecules, then the motion of the electrons would be basically, the air molecules would impede the motion of the x-rays. They would collide with the air molecules and they would not make it to the end of the uh, their path and to the tungsten target. So they would be scattered everywhere and so you wouldn't actually get all the x-rays that you could get, which is why we need to put it in a vacuum to have a clear path for the electrons. Secondly, we've already talked about the collimation. The resultant x-ray is going to be collimated into a collimated beam. So once we have this useful x-ray beam, we want to use a certain type of x-ray called a soft x-ray. And soft x-rays, as opposed to hard x-rays, are x-rays that have lower energy. So as we've looked at previously, we know that the x-rays have a wavelength of in the range of 10 to the power of negative 8 to the 10 to the power of negative 13. If we want lower energy photons, we need to have higher energy wavelength, uh, higher wavelengths for the, elect the photons, and that will create a lower frequency. Lower frequency means lower energy. So we're looking at this end of the spectrum here, not this end. So that's the um, soft electrons so if i could draw like a range over here of wavelengths this would be soft lower energy and this would be hard which is higher energy and we're trying to use the soft energy the reason for this is because um photons basically can make cells in your body for instance they can make it mutate uh, they can mu mutate the dna for instance inside your body and there is a possibility always for health defects when you go under an x-ray and the probability of getting these effects are extremely low because we only use soft x-rays that have low energy so it's very unlikely that they're able to produce these kinds of mutations in your skin um, as opposed to that hard x-rays actually kind of overlap into gamma ray territory and they have a much higher probability of causing health defects for you so that's why we're supposed to use soft x-rays that are used in med medical physics and the x-rays will emerge in all directions. So what we're essentially doing in terms of energy is we're taking the, um, obviously we're taking, you know, electrical potential energy, we are converting it into kinetic energy of the electrons, and then we are transforming it into electromagnetic energy in, in forms of this x-ray. But only 1% of the kinetic energy of the electrons become x-rays, and the rest will actually be turned into heat during the rapid deceleration due to friction with, um, all of the 
atoms in the metal target and the motion of the electrons and the vibration of it and everything. So most of it turns into heat, but we want that 1% that becomes x-rays and we're trying to collect it. So I think that's about it for the production of x-rays. I hope this was helpful for you. And as I said, there are going to be more videos on x-rays, so x-ray attenuation, etc. So I do suggest you go check them out as well. Thank you so much for watching and do check out my channel for more videos on physics.